did you know? School Sport Victoria offers 650,000 sporting opportunities in 31 different sports. At 10,700 events across the state every single year. That's a lot of kids playing sport. And for over 25 years, the Victorian School Sports Awards have recognised more than 1,500 students, teachers and volunteers for excellence and outstanding contribution to school sport. Now that's a champion effort. I reckon I could watch that video several times over because it makes me proud of what we do. Ashley, thanks for joining us. We had a few little technical issues there, but that's okay. It's only 108 and we're in no rush because we're in <laughs> corona isolation anyway. So thanks heaps for joining us. You're a champion for giving us the time. And look at us matchy matchy with the shirts with the STR on there. I know, we are matching. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm really excited to be here and have a chat to you. No worries. Well, we're excited to have you on board. Now, behind me, as you'll see, this is not a green screen. This is actually my theatre screen. I've got Ashley Brennan on um, playlist right here. And it is quite interesting listening to the commentary. And I don't know if you've ever played those videos back, but you certainly have achieved a lot in a short amount of time. Let me go through it for everyone's benefit. 2006 Commonwealth Games, 2007 World Championships. 2008 Olympics, 2010 World Championships and Commonwealth Games, 2011 World Championships and 2012 Olympics. That's phenomenal. Would you agree? Oh, that's that's so nice of you to um to 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 list off all of those things. Yeah, it was um a huge part of my life, and um I think yeah, looking back on on what I have achieved, it makes me feel really proud. And um there was a lot of hard work that went into that, and it, not just by me, but everyone that was supporting me um, and helping me to achieve my goals. So I definitely couldn't have done it without the support systems that I had around me. Um, it was definitely the best time of my life. And so, yeah, when I get to look back at it and, and chat about my experience, it's, it's a very great feeling for me. And I, I love talking about, you know, what I've experienced. Brilliant. Well, we love talking about it as well. Now, out of that, you managed to get uh, to achieve in 2006 Com Games gold and silver, which was in Melbourne, a gold and silver medal yeah. you came home with, which is fantastic, and 2010 Commonwealth Games, a gold and bronze in Delhi. Which of those was the yeah. sweetest victory? Um, obviously both super sweet, um, but I definitely think the Melbourne Commonwealth Games in 2006, um, it was, you know, obviously a home crowd in Melbourne. There's not too many opportunities that you get to compete in front of, you know, a home crowd. Um, I was still technically a junior at the time, so I was only 15 years old um, and I was a bit of a surprise pick for the team because I'd been injured the year before and I didn't really know what to expect. So um, being called up for that team, um, I was probably a bit naive as to what the whole experience was like and um, I don't think I really quite understood how how insanely huge it was, but I just remember walking out into Rod Laver Arena with my teammates to a, to a screaming home crowd was absolutely incredible and doing that in front of my family and friends was, was really special. Um, we won a team gold medal and I just remember standing on that platform, receiving that medal, singing our national anthem um, in front of Melbourne was, was amazing and um, it's definitely what inspired me to continue and, and to drive me, you know, towards two years later going towards the Beijing Olympics. Um, Delhi was also very special, um, just very different, obviously, in the background. Um, we didn't have our home crowd. That was the Delhi Commonwealth Games in the back there. But, um, yeah, it was, it was just a different experience. Both beautiful, though. Very good. So it's um, always good to get a, a nice picture. Now, you, correct me if I'm wrong, at the 2006, 15th of July 2006, around the time when you were starting to compete, you were 15 years old, is that correct? Yes. How did you cope yes. with the pressure? Yes, uh, what, what year did you say, sorry? 15th of July 2006, so that would have been your first yes. uh, Com Games. 
right? Yes, yes. So that was, um, yeah, I was 15 years old. So I was technically a junior, but because I was eligible for the Beijing Olympics, I was able to compete in the senior competition. Um, yeah, obviously, as I said before, I don't think I really knew exactly what to expect going into the Melbourne Commonwealth Games and, and how amazing it would be. Um, and I'm just so grateful that I did have that experience from a really young age. I think it prepared me well for all the competitions that were to come. Um, I still don't think, like I was definitely nowhere near my peak at 15 years of age and I don't think I really learnt how to properly compete until I was about 19. So um, I think that's when I can look back on my career and understand that I, you know, I could deal with pressure much better. I trusted my training much better as I got older. Um, but I think those experiences as a 15 year old was so important because I could always go back to that and I learned from those experiences of how to control my nerves and and how to make sure I replicated what I've been practicing at training which is fantastic so as a 15 year old in front of a home crowd I know you mentioned it a little bit before what was it like <laughs> Yeah, um, definitely the best time of my life. And I think over my whole entire career, even with the Olympics, that was still the best time of my life, was competing in Melbourne as a 15-year-old. Um, I remember for the floor event, um, I was first to go up on floor and it was our final apparatus um, as a team for the team competition. And because the crowd was yelling so loudly, I couldn't hear the start of my my floor music and so I sort of felt like I was a little bit off from the start and all of a sudden I was straight into it um, and yeah I just remember sharing that you know experience with my teammates and um, a lot of people think that gymnastics is a very individual sport um, but when it comes to that team event that's the number one thing that's so important to us um, and I'm just really grateful that I got to share that with my best friends and um, it's still something that we talk about today and, and have that special bond with each other um, and I know that my family got so much out of it as well you know they were so excited and uh, I know that they got to enjoy all of my journey with me and, and I, it's nice to be able to share that with them as well. Which is so good. Now that would have been um, exciting having your family there with you obviously and family and friends that you did talk about that a lot. Um, where did this all start for you? <laughs> Yep, so uh, I was seven years old when I took up gymnastics, which uh, now seems like it's, it's quite an old age to start. We're seeing a lot of girls start, you know, at about four. Um, but I started at the age of seven. I was that kid at home that was constantly doing handstands and cartwheels at home, and it was it was that that came more naturally to me than catching a basketball or, um, you know, playing tennis or anything like that. I had no hand-eye coordination whatsoever, um, but cartwheels and handstands and the splits were something that was more comfortable for me um, and so my mum took me down to my local gymnastics club at Berry Leisure Centre um, and I started there and it was probably the first sport that I really felt like I just could not wait to go back and do again and that's probably when I realised this is the right sport for me. Um, it progressed quite quickly and I was soon training at our state training centre um, from the age of seven and so it did all progress quite quickly but that's also gymnastics itself such a young girl sport um, and it's that's probably a challenge in itself um, and so yeah it all, all quite happened quite quickly which is I mean you said before that seven is you know normally they start a little bit earlier than that but quite incredible that you yeah. were managing to compete or to train at such a young age that would have been demanding on your body at that age right <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I think I was still going through, my body was growing, it was changing. I was getting lots of injuries that were, you know, usually because of the type of training load that I was doing on such a young body. And I'd find that my body was breaking down on me at all the wrong times. Uh, so my recovery was a huge part of my training and, and what I had to invest a lot of time in. And I really, you know, am appreciative of my family and also my coaches and physios and support staff that I was so grateful and lucky to have in place to look after my body, keep it all in one piece to help me keep going back to training day after day. 
Um, it's also super demanding because, you know, I was training about 30 hours a week from about the age of 10. So when I was in grade five, uh, which is a very different lifestyle to a lot of kids that I was going to school with. And so that was difficult, but also it just became the new normal for me. Just like, you know, being in isolation is kind of, you know, this everything's the new normal. For me, going to school for a couple of hours a day and leaving early and training, you know, between three and six hours a day was was normal for me and um, I didn't know anything different. Uh, so I think it taught me a lot of skills from a really young age and they're definitely skills that I definitely call back on now. Which is so exciting. Now, uh, you know, you, you said 30 hours a week of training for a seven or grade five-year-old, pretty incredible. What would yeah. you, what advice would you give to your 12-year-old self now? Yeah, I think looking back on my gymnastics career, I just remember, or I think back now as to how quickly it went. Um, I used to get really stressed out and overwhelmed by different things that I had going on in the gym or I'd get really nervous about particular things and I guess that's kind of a trait that I have now. Um, I can get quite overwhelmed easily. So I think if I was looking back and to talk to my 12-year-old self, I would just say to stay calm, go with the flow and enjoy absolutely every moment because it truly is the best time of your life being a young athlete while you're going through school and, you know, all of these opportunities are being presented to yourself. So my main thing that I would say to my 12-year-old self is to just have fun, make the most of every opportunity because you don't really know when it's going to continue or end or wrap up. So, um, yeah, have fun with it. Did you think you would go so long? Because let's, let's face facts, you've gone, you went from 2006 right through to 2012 to stay in peak yeah. form for that time. Now, we'll talk about in a second that 2004 was not a great year for you. It was full of injuries, but how yeah. did you go staying in form that long? Well, absolutely, it's, it's really tough. And I think for gymnastics, as I was saying before, your body does struggle to stay in, in shape and in form for that long. Um, and I do think it's probably a, a, too difficult to do. After the Beijing Olympics, I really didn't have any plans beyond that. So I sort of thought I'd go to, you know, aim to go to the Beijing Olympics in 2008. I was 17 years old. And I remember right as I'd finished competing, I said to my mum and dad, well, I'm retired now. I'm 17 years old. I'm going to retire because that was just the normal thing that a gymnast did. They went to their Olympic Games and then that was it because it is really challenging to stay in a sport of gymnastics for more than one Olympic cycle because we've always got young gymnasts coming up and learning new skills and they push you out of the way. But um, not too many girls had really challenged um, that in sort of sticking around for another cycle. Uh, and so after Beijing, I had seven months off. My body went through so many changes. I, you know, then decided that it would be a really good idea to make a comeback. And so after seven months, I put on about seven kilos and I decided that I wanted to swing around the bars and flip and land and do all of these things again. Uh, and coming back to the gym was really challenging because I'd had a brand, I've got a brand new body. I had a like an adult body that I was trying to work with and do all these skills that were what I was doing as a child. Um, and it was really, really tricky. And I think that's something that I look back now and I think that was such a huge thing as a young 18 year old to deal with. Um, but also there was a positive to come from it where I found that my body didn't break down as often. I think I was a lot stronger and I was able to tolerate that training load that was, you know, expected of me as well. So I think there were some huge benefits to come out of having a break from the sport. It reignited my passion for the sport as well. And uh, I started training for different reasons. Like I didn't want to just go to the Olympics anymore. Um, it was more just doing it for myself and my own sense of accomplishment and enjoyment. I think I enjoyed it a lot more after that little break. And so I'm really grateful I took some time off. 
which actually feeds into what you just said before about giving yourself your 12 year old self the same advice that you've got to really enjoy the sport and yeah. fact is that um, we, we see a lot of drop off in sport in community sport in school sport from around 15 to 18 and there are different reasons yeah. for that pressures and all that but also the enjoyment factor seems to um, be a massive part of the equation to keeping teenagers in particular in the sport. Yeah, absolutely. I think when I finished, you know, as a 17-year-old, I was just craving going to school and finishing year 12 and having a normal lifestyle, I guess, like and, and keeping up with school and, and not having that added pressure. Um, and so I gave it a go. I gave it a red hot crack and I just wanted to be sort of more normal. Um, and it, it didn't really take me long to realise that normal wasn't that exciting and I I knew that my purpose was doing sport. It's what made me happy. And I'd never, I didn't really find a hobby once I finished the sport. And so probably that transition out of sport wasn't that good either. Or maybe I wasn't quite ready to finish. So, um, yeah, I can definitely see how drop off can occur because you're not enjoying your sport and you're doing it for other reasons. Um, so I think that's when it's, you know, probably a good time to step away, have a think about what you do want to achieve and, and, Find a new passion about it. Find what, you know, drives that that burning desire to get back in the gym and, and do your absolute best. So true. Now, Biopug has got a fantastic question here. How do you develop the strength yeah. you need to compete in the Olympics? <laughs> Yeah, great question. So before Beijing, I'd been doing gymnastics for 10 years. So uh, it's a very gradual process to build up and, and build that strength towards, you know, competing at the Olympics. And it definitely didn't happen overnight. Um, I think I needed that 10 years of training behind me and it was very, very gradual increases in, in strength development um, and learning new skills and putting my routines together and just slowly increasing the difficulty. I think that's it, is that I needed to keep up with that world standard. And so it was just a very gradual increase in all of that. Um, but more than just a physical strength, I think that mental strength uh, in competing in the Olympic Games is probably something that is more important and, and more important to work on because I think a lot of your performance comes down to what's going on above your shoulders and how you mentally prepare for something, what mindset you're in. And I knew that that is something that meant I was either going to have a really good day or a bad day in the gym. Now, uh, that's what I was going to break it down to. I know Bai is probably talking about physical strength, but there is a mental strength that you've just touched on. For a 15-year-old girl in front of a home crowd, yes, that sounds nice, but that's an awful <laughs> lot of pressure to have mum and dad and friends and family there. And, and yeah, you know, you did exceptional in that event anyway, but... How do you prepare yourself for the mental pressure of putting on the green and gold yeah. and representing your country? Because that's the, that can't yeah. be an easy thing to do. No, not at all. And I think that was that's probably the bigger part. Like you know, when you go into a competition, that you've done all the hard work, and really you get to a competition, whether it's a Commonwealth Games or the Olympic Games, or it might be um, a competition at your home gym. It might be you know something more simple um, and lower level. And I used to get so nervous, and I used to find that those nerves were something that would really impact my performance. Um, for me, I also felt that putting on the green and gold was such a huge motivator. I think I'd put my green and gold leotard on. It had the Australian coat of arms on my chest, the Australian flag on my sleeve, and I loved feeling that patriotic. I loved wearing the green and gold, and I think that that often put me in a new groove and it gave me some sort of feeling that, you know, I really wanted to go out there and do my absolute best. Um, but it wasn't always enough because I do think that if I wasn't in the right mindset or if I let something um, interfere with my, my mindset, my performance, then it would have big consequences on my performance. So, yeah, there was always a lot of pressure, um, especially in a team competition. I felt that that's when I felt a lot of pressure. Um, gymnastics is a sport where you don't often get to throw away a score if it's a bad one. So you didn't ever want to feel like you were letting a teammate down um, and you didn't want to, you know, 
all the hard work that you'd been doing for weeks, months, years leading up to that competition, you didn't want it to feel like a waste. So there is a lot going on in your head, but that's when it comes down to that mental skills and just trusting yourself and going through the routines and just making it so um, like you don't even have to think about it. You just let the body go through the motion. And that's something I worked so hard on when, as I got a bit older. That's right. Now, if you kids, if you jump on our YouTube channel, you'll see a playlist of, of heaps of videos that we've got of Ashley. But watching those videos, it's very clear that you can see the the pressure through your facial expressions. That you obviously had a very high expectation of yourself. Um, one comment, one judge actually made a comment. I'm not, I don't know if you've, I'm sure you've seen them, yeah. but don't know if you remember it. But you got the score and you smiled, and the judge said, "Ah, oh, now we see." a smile yeah remember that one do you know what even since (laughs) i think i remember um i always looked like such a serious gymnast and really didn't smile that much until i was finished (laughs) and even as a seven year old i remember going to like my first and my first or second gymnastics competition and my dad used to draw a smiley face on my hand (laughs) and uh, I think my dad always used to watch me compete and be like, why does she look so sad? Like, what's going on? (laughs) And so he drew a smiling face on my hand and I only really just remembered that. But it was probably one of the best things. Like, my dad just wanted me to smile and enjoy myself. And I think that's that's what sport's about, you know. Um, And gymnastics is all about how you look and you want to smile and you want to make it look like you're having a good time. So I wish I could go back and maybe tell my young self to smile and enjoy it more. Yeah, that's that's so cool. That's a great story. So all you dads out there, draw smiley faces on your child's hand. Now, what are you doing to keep yourself in shape during isolation? Because obviously you, you, you're not able to go to the gym as much. I don't think you have much yeah. gear at home, but what are you doing to keep yourself fit? Yeah, so I work in the health and the fitness industry. So uh, naturally, I still really enjoy keeping fit. Um, I found that, you know, because we've been so isolated, I've actually really enjoyed running. Um, so I'd meet up with one of my really good friends and we'd run around the tan or anywhere that's, you know, a decent run. Um, keeping our distance, of course, but it's obviously a nice way to sort of catch up with someone while exercising. Um, and then also with my work, I'm having to now do a lot of Zoom sessions with my clients and uh, usually when I take clients for their sessions, I'm just telling them what to do. But now because it's over Zoom, I'm actually doing the sessions and hoping that they're all following along at home. So I'm getting quite a bit of a workout throughout isolation, which is quite a nice change. Usually I'm not doing any of the exercises that I prescribe, so it's a nice change. That is, that sounds like a nice change. Now, (laughs) just before we continue on, do you have your medical medals with you because I don't know that many people have seen these lovely medals but why don't you show us what you've got there absolutely so definitely by far my favorite medal the Melbourne Commonwealth Games medal here so it came on a lovely chain um, this was our team gold medal that we won uh, in 2006 yep. so that was pretty special um, definitely my favorite one there um, and then we also won or I won a silver medal on floor as well so that's my silver medal um, very very special I keep them hidden away at home so that um, yeah they're not on show unfortunately but I love getting them out whenever I go and visit you know schools or have a chat to anyone and then we've also got uh the Delhi Commonwealth Games medals as well so very special um and yeah they're you know something that I get to look back on my career and say well there's where all my hard work went (laughs) exactly and and it's pretty rare that people would have those kinds of things in their own home so We've got life after sport now. You you impacted so many young people, you probably don't realise how many you're impacted, but I'm going to show you a few images now on the screen. Yeah. And these images uh, have come in from Caitlin Woods. I don't know if you remember Caitlin Woods from Wesley College, but she was a young girl and she's yeah. got a question here, but this is a, a picture that you signed for her. And this is um, Caitlin here. Um, we've blurred out the other faces, but is Caitlin with you? Okay. 
and here's some more footage of you training but this is a question i was lucky enough to train with you as an idp gymnast for five years yes. also lucky enough to be part of the ssv cross country team and that's team i found gymnastics to be the best solid grounding that has helped me in all my sports from running basketball and horse riding being involved at that level has helped me not only work out my body but taught me how to jump and land so much more. So her question is, how have you found gymnastics has helped you now in life and during those years of intense training? Would you recommend all kids participating in gymnastics? And what do you think the advantages have been that you have seen? Yeah, great one. Thanks so much for your question. And um, absolutely, I think, you know, gymnastics is such a, a great foundation for all children to to have a go at, even if it's not a sport that you're going to continue long term. I do think, and there's so much research to show that there's that gymnastics really sets kids up with really good um, spatial awareness, aerial awareness, you know, you learn to roll, you learn to land correctly, um, you learn to fall it really well. Um, and so I definitely think that gymnastics is essential for, for young kids. I teach gymnastics to um, primary school age kids and I absolutely love teaching them to move through gymnastics. And um, I definitely find that um, there's so many skills and, and developments that you can make through the sport or through learning new skills um, that are really going to set you up long term in other sports as well. Um, for me personally, I think just doing gymnastics, it was really the only sport that I did. Um, but for me, I think just being active and, and the way that it makes me feel not just physically, but mentally, I'm a much happier person. I'm a much nicer person to be around when I'm active. And I think that that's what's been ingrained in me is that I really value exercise. I really value being active um, and I love a challenge. And so, um, yeah, any any sort of sports that I'll have a play around with now, I think sometimes I think that gymnastics should have really set me up quite well for some sports, but there's lots that I've tried and I'm absolutely shocking at. So I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're not shocking. But she's got another question here and it's, it's quite profound. Um, she says, I know the commitment and sacrifice that is involved in elite gymnastics and, and you talked about that and we'll talk about that in a second but would love to know how it's evolved and translated into your adult life like what have you what you did as a 7 to 15 19 year old how is that translated now to your adult life yeah so I think with with sport in general uh, you learn from quite a young age to be resilient because things don't always go your way. I think most of the time, you know, a hurdle comes up and you don't really have smooth sailing all the way to the finish line. And that's something that I definitely found with gymnastics. And that was through being injured or not being selected for teams or um, not being ready for a competition. Um, and so all of those setbacks sort of built up my resilience. And I think now that that's something that I'm aware of now is that I can be more resilient in life. And if setbacks do pop up, then I'm able to deal with that better. Uh, I also think that gymnastics, um, it made me very determined. And so I think I'm always very goal orientated today because I was so goal orientated as a seven year old. Um, and so I think they're definitely traits and characteristics that I still have today. And I think, you know, when going for jobs and when, um, you know, working for a new boss or anything like that, they value what you learn through sport. If you can say that you did a particular sport for this long or anything like that, I think a lot of people look at, wow, they must have, you know, a lot of commitment, a lot of determination and be able to manage their time. And those are just sort of some of the things that I learned from sport and that I'm using today. Which is, yeah, so true what you're saying. Now, you talked a little bit about sacrifice, you, and, and Caitlin mentions it here, but what kinds of sacrifices did you have to make as a teenager to stay in form for as long as you had to stay in form? Yeah. I get asked 
asked that question so much. And I think when I look back at my career, I don't really see anything that I did as a sacrifice because, you know, I, I might have missed like my school formal. I might have not gone to parties on the weekend. Um, I may have, you know, missed out on a few, you know, a few family holidays and things like that. But at the end of the day, I got to go to the Olympic Games, which is like the biggest party on the planet. And it's like, the most amazing experience that you'll ever have in your life. And so when I look back and I think what I sacrificed, I don't even see it as a sacrifice, but I think my parents probably made more sacrifices than I did. Um, maybe they weren't able to go on those family holidays and, you know, they had to drive me to training every day and, uh, you know, they made bigger sacrifices than I did and I'd do it all again for the experience that I got to do. So, um, yeah, I don't really see anything that I did as a huge sacrifice. It was more maybe I didn't get to spend as much time at school um, and, you know, maybe that would have been different but I think, you know, I still have managed to achieve what I want to out of my education. You know, I went to school the same year that or I did the Beijing Olympics while completing year 12, which was a huge challenge. Um, and same with the London Olympics. I was in university and and still studying while competing. And I think that's something that I wanted to do and I was still able to get out what I wanted to from my education as well. Fantastic. And that, you know, if I do say so myself, I think that really does say a lot about your character, that you don't see it as a sacrifice because probably the questions are coming from, I don't know where the questions are coming from, but I'd imagine that teenagers would look at your life and go, man, she's had to give up a lot, but you haven't seen it that way because your goal and your desire is very different to going out partying and yeah. picking up boys and all that sort of stuff that goes with yeah. parties, but you, you're more interested in just being a better per version of yourself. Yeah. I used to say that because um, I always, you know, someone would say to me, oh, what are you doing tonight? It might have been a Friday night. And I'd say, oh, I'm going to gym. And it was almost like gym was my boyfriend. So um, that was kind of like what I was dealing with as a young 17, 18, 19 year old. Um, but at the same time, like it's such gymnastics for me was, I knew it was only for a short period of time. I was retired by the age of 21. Um, and I still had a really good balance, I think from the age of 19 to 21. Um, you know, I, was, I still had fun with my friends Friends, but I was just sensible, you know, gymnastics was my priority. I knew I didn't have a, a huge window of opportunity and I had to give it absolutely everything I could. So it was just about balance. You still want to have a good time with your friends. You know, I, I did, you know, go to birthdays and parties and things. Like, and they're things that I really enjoyed, but I made sure that I had enough rest and recovery and I worked super hard in the gym. So I think it is all about balance. And um, you might have to make some sacrifices, but you can still have a really good time. Very good. I'd, I'd imagine you would have broken a lot of hearts by telling people that you were going to see Jim that night. But at the same <laughs> time, you, you, you know, gymnastics as, as a career has now finished. Where to from now? What is what does life after sport look like for Ashley Brennan? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I've retired so long ago now. Um, and I think that that transition after sport was really quite hard. You know, I was so used to doing something that I was really good at. And how am I ever going to find something to, to match that again? Um, so I work, you know, in within exercise rehab. And I really love being able to change people's lives through movement and, um, you know, reducing pain and, and just, you know, yeah, changing people's lifestyles through exercise. So I'm really enjoying that. Um, as I said before, I love teaching gymnastics at a low level it's at primary school, kinder to sort of grade five is really, really fun. So I love being involved in the sport in that way. Um, and I'm really enjoying doing some mentoring work. So I'm doing a little bit of work with another SSV ambassador, Steph Morehouse. We did gymnastics together and we just feel that we have learned a lot through our gymnastics careers. Um, as I said before, we had to deal a lot with body image issues and growing up and, and developing while competing in a sport where it's really essential that, you know, you look good as well. Um, so I think that we've got a lot 
a really important knowledge that we can um, support young female athletes especially through maybe what they're going through, um, just being a bit of a sounding board and chatting to them um, and just giving, you know, really knowledgeable and guided advice through our experience as well. So I love being able to speak about my experience and um, hope that I can just help anyone that's, um, you know, maybe struggling not just in sport but in life as well. Very good. Now, we wouldn't have you on as an SSV ambassador if we didn't think you were a fantastic role model. How would a parent who would love you to get into contact with, you know, their little girl and continue to mentor them, how would they get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, social media is a great way to get in contact with people at the moment. So, of course, um, you know, first point, someone can reach out to me on Instagram if they like, and then um, we can go to email or or phone from there and and discuss how I can definitely assist, you know, their child in whatever they're, you know, trying to achieve, whether that's sport, whether it's balancing school and sport, um, whether it's with um, fueling their bodies for performance, um, working on goal setting and um, and things like that. So, or whether it, it could even be motivation. So, um, yeah, social media is really easy to reach out um, and then I'm obviously more um, available through other means as well. Brilliant. So if you've got a teenager that you want mentored and you'd love Ashley to mentor that, that teenager of yours, then please be in contact through yeah. our Instagram channel. Send and we'll my way. The show notes. <laughs> in the show notes, we'll have her Instagram channel and other means of connecting with her. And this will be ripped into a podcast also, so make sure you jump on to the Ask SSV podcast that is on all your podcast channels. And you can re-listen to this and, and get on board and maybe even have your teenager listen to this we've loved having you on board actually we love having you as an ssv ambassador thanks for joining us today sorry about the technical issues at the start but we got there in the end oh good thank you so much for having me and always love my involvement with ssv and, and and here to support you guys any way i can as well so thanks so much Brilliant. Now, join us next week. We've got the very lovely Brooke Stratton, who is the current Australian long jump women's record holder and also Com Games silver medalist and Olympian as well and SSV ambassador as well, just like our very own Ashley Brennan. So join us next week for that interview and don't forget to get on board our SSV podcast and we'll take it from there. Thanks, Ash. Thank you. Thank you.